Welcome back to the Modern Art Tour. This is Planet Hot Dog, the continent of burger, the country of candy. What's this got to do with art? Or have we landed in the wrong place? Coney Island, a complete art-free zone. There aren't any big ideas here, just fantastic low pop mass dross. Who is responsible for collapsing this stuff into the world of high culture? One man. Andy, do you feel that the public has insulted your art? Uh, no. Why not? Uh, well, I haven't thought about it. It doesn't bother you at all, then? Uh, no. Andy, do you think that pop art has sort of reached the point where it's becoming repetitious now? Uh, yes. Do you think it should break away from being pop art? Uh, no. Are you just going to carry on? Uh, yes. Here's Warhol with his icons of modern life. Modern celebrity, modern glamour, modern sexiness. When I first saw a Warhol, like everyone else probably, I couldn't see why it was art. It was a photo, surely. We hear about his great colour, and he is great at that, but what we first see are things, objects, soup cans, or Marilyn Monroe, or Jackie Kennedy. Jackie multiplied by a million. It's Gideon. Liz Taylor, why is that art? When Warhol was first becoming famous, he was asked what he thought about abstract expressionism. He just said, art is dead. Did he think he had killed art himself, or did it just die on its own? We certainly associate his name with a big question mark hanging over it. After Marilyn's in 1962, he painted a lot of Elvis Presley's in 1963. He painted double Elvises and single Elvises and triple Elvises. This one is 11 Elvises, all different, and all the same. He painted the whole series very quickly. He painted 50 of them in an afternoon, but the studio was leaking and they were spoiled slightly. So he just painted them all again. All the things that in the abstract expressionist days were assumed to justify art's difficulty, its specialness, its sensitivity, its unrepeatability, its complexity and depth, he was happy to throw away. Being famous and being recognised, he thought, were better. It's one thing to have that thought, and the people he hung out with had thoughts like that all the time because they were stoned or drunk. But what Warhol was good at was showing what that thought might actually look like. He had always been interested in glamour. From the time of uh, seeing movies from Hollywood and the photo play magazines, he always thought there was such a great glamour and magic about being a star. And I think he directed himself to find out what was glamour, you know, and how could I put it in a can and then just paint it around, actually paint glamour in a room or on a canvas. Warhol famously came from the wrong side of the tracks, where there wasn't any glamour. This is Pittsburgh where Warhol was born in 1928. He lived here with his mother and father, who came over from Czechoslovakia and who could hardly speak any English, and his two brothers, John and Paul. It was a simple, working-class life. Warhol was always ill as a child and read movie magazines in bed and ate chocolates. I used to go out and buy him uh, movie, uh movie star magazines, you know, different theater magazines, which he got very fond of. He used to cut out the pictures. And then later on, he says, Paul, how can I get uh, uh, some of these movie stars to autograph, you know? And I says, well, I'll write to them, you know. So I wrote to a lot of movie stars, and a lot of them responded, especially like Shirley Temple. She sent them an 8 by 10 photographed Andrew Arhola from Shirley Trample. You know, he prized that. When I talk to Paul, I don't feel it's all that different to talking to anyone. He doesn't know who Warhol was any more than anyone else. 
because the artificial genius Warhol that everyone more or less knows is all he knows too. Uh, I forget who I'm calling. <laughs> Uh, uh, Levine? Warhol killed off his real self to make room for his art self. He made production line art because that was America, and made himself into a parody genius because that was art. That was Picasso and Jackson Pollock, geniuses who expressed themselves. Warhol made a new self to fit the new world, expressing his new artificial self, his brainwashed American consumerist self. He was vividly expressing the world. He was the world in all its ordinariness and strangeness. He had to keep the new invented self going, though. He had his own manual, which he wrote himself, his famous book, Andy Warhol's philosophy from A to B and back again. I enjoyed it as a student, and I expect I'll be coming round one of these aisles and reading extracts from it at any moment, if this ironic, easy-listening soundtrack is anything to go by. When you want to be like something, it means you really love it. When you want to be like a rock, you really love that rock. I love plastic idols. What makes a painting beautiful is the way the paint's put on. But I don't understand how women put on makeup. It gets on your lips and it's so heavy. Lipstick and makeup and powder and shadow creams and jewelry. It's all so heavy. I have a fantasy about money. I'm walking down the street and I hear somebody say, in a whisper, there goes the richest person in the world. Andy always said Every, everything is on the surface, just look there and you'll see everything that's there. He didn't have an intention to be heavy materials-wise or to be deep image-wise. He liked being surface. He was audacious. And somehow he knew that what he was doing was right on point. It was always exactly what needed to be done at that exact time. And it was beyond being hip and cool even. It was genius. is sometimes thought of as a light and breezy artist, sometimes as a rather dark one. I think of him as pretty dark, even at his lightest and breeziest. This installation, Silver Pillows, from 1966, is Warhol's take on the ultra-seriousness of minimalist sculpture of the time. But also, it's a complete negative, couldn't care less comment upon it. His pink and yellow cow wallpaper from the same exhibition exhibited here exactly as it was then, in a room adjacent to his silver floaty pillows, is an up yours to contemporary abstract painting with its abstruse theories of color and flatness. Warhol's own paintings go from aggressive pastiche of the nice, his version of lovely impressionism is both gorgeous and sarcastic, to stark revelations of the horrible, his death and disaster series. Warhol took everything the mass media had to offer as if it was messages from the gods, and the gods always have a lot to say about death. Warhol himself was a regular churchgoer, so it's only right he should feel at home with religion's big subject, the end. With everything he does, there's the witty idea, often given to him by somebody else, as it was in the case of the Death and Disaster series, but also the cleverness and stylishness of the idea's execution like picking the right title and the right scale for this painting called Foot and Tire. Just big enough for the foot to be registered beneath the tire at a glance. And picking the right news photo car crash for this painting called Five Deaths. The five teenage corpses are leaning on the grass, looking out, their eyes wide open as if they're feeling fine, but in fact they're crushed, mangled and covered with blood. Ambulance disaster, the one vehicle you'd think you'd feel safe in, and white burning car. The repeated news photo image shows the burning car wreck and the driver grotesquely hanging from a telegraph pole, a casual passerby. 
not just casually passing by and glancing at death, but not even bothering to glance, with the corresponding blank, empty nothingness of the last section of the series. <laughs>